So here we're going to discuss my Euro USD trade. Now I took a sell on this pair and the reason for me taking a sell is clearly because the structure of this market is more sell bias than it is buy bias. And the way we identify that is by recognizing that the structure of the market has changed with this break. Because previously we was in an uptrend and when we look at this visually it's very simple to see that the market was moving up. How do we identify it from a technical perspective? Well we're looking at the market structure with higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Now once the market fails to make a new higher low and continue to the upside and starts to break and violate previous structure then that means now I'm looking for sells. What I'm looking for is an indication that price is attempting to push up, failing and creating a level. And once I get that evidence, I can then now start to scale down to find supporting evidence and then see if my patterns develop for me to take a trade. So now that we've got the directional bias, I'm clearly looking for sales on this market structure. Now, what I started to identify is once we made this new lower low on this market structure, price failed to continue to push down to make a new lower low. So how I'd mark this is from this wick to this wick to this wick, just accounting for all three wicks to make sure that I can trap the range. I'll do that for the top also, and I just want to trap the range. So where price is stuck between at this moment in time. Now, how we now start to think about this is that if the structure of the market is to the downside, we're looking for the price to make a new lower low, lower high. We're then expecting the market to make a lower low, but we're trapped in a range. We now have to start saying to ourselves, the only time we can sell this is if price comes to the top of the range. Because what you need to make sure you have in your favor is range to get to break even or range to at least manage that trade accordingly before you get to an area where price may struggle to break below, find traffic and then reverse in your direction and take you out at break even or even your stop loss if you don't obviously manage it to break even. So now that I've got all of this evidence, I can now scale down to my behavioral time frame and start to understand what is really happening here. Now, how I would manage this to make sure that I've got all the information that is relevant to this trade is to take into consideration how price is starting to react at the highs and lows of the market structure. So I can now bring this up to this level here and you will see how this high correlates with the high to the right. If we then drag this across, you'll now start to see a major range. So we have the range here where price has reacted to before, created the low, attempted to push up, didn't quite make it to the top, but that's not a problem. Back down to the low where the wick was formed, back to the top where the previous high was formed, and now price push away, come back to this level. And what I'm looking for is a reaction. Why? Because past history has told me that if price comes back to a key level in the market, more often than not, I'd say about 90-95% of the time, price will react. By how much? We don't know, but it will react. So now, how do I make sense of this to then be able to get into a trade and opportunity that's going to be feasible for me in terms of the range and making sure that if I take a sell from this point, I can either get to break even or hit my targets before I get down to an area in the market where there's going to be traffic. Well, I simply scale down to my entry time frame. And that would, on this occasion, be the five minute time frame. And now we start to make sense of this. There's a few elements to this trade you must understand. If the market structure is pushing to the upside, we're going to make higher highs. If the market is in a push phase, what we expect the market to do after that phase is exhaust. If the market is moving sideways, what we expect the market to do is eventually break and continue in either or direction. So now that I've got that in my head, that we're currently in a push phase on this market structure, which is this here, we've come to the key level in the market. It's now time for me to see if the evidence that has presented itself in the past, which is a reaction from a key level, will present itself again. And as you can clearly see, this is exactly what happened. So the market started to close with wick rejections, which is clearly indicating bullish pressure into structure and a depletion in bullish pressure. That is enough support and evidence for me to then say, well, do you know what? If we're in a push phase, I'm expecting the exhaustion at a key level in the market and the 4H time frame is sell bias, potentially making that new lower high. It's now time for me to take the trade. Now, I want you to bear this in mind. Me taking this trade doesn't mean that I know it's going to win. But what I do know is I gathered enough evidence from my 4H time frame, 
to support that the structure had been broken to now switch to a downtrend and potential lower high. We have entered a range on the hourly time frame, and the behavior has indicated to me previously that price has been respecting these levels. And then we go to our pattern time frame, which is on this occasion the five minute time frame to recognize that the phase of the market is pushing to the upside and now starting to, uh, now starting to show signs of depletion in bullish pressure. That's supported by wick rejections, and then it's for me to execute the trade. And as you can clearly see, I executed the trade um, with a 9 pip stop loss, 20 pip 27 pip target, and I took a 1 to 3 on this. So if I'm risking, let's say, 1% on this trade, my reward on this trade is 3%. If, my, if I risk 2% on this trade, then my reward on this trade is 6%. And it's very simple to trade like this. Doesn't matter what strategy. If you're trading market structure and behavior, then you will see that past history has illustrated, the, illustrated these patterns to you in the past numerous and numerous of times. And once you can fully grasp that and accept that, that will really help you to trust your analysis, have faith and confidence in your abilities to execute. And then all that's left for you to do is manage the trade. That is it. Now, some people will ask me, well, where's the price action going next? Honestly, I don't know now. What I do know, though, is if the market is in a downtrend and we created a lower high and we've come back to a key level, there's a high chance that we're going to react. If I recognize that we're in a range based on behavior and I sell from the top, there's a high chance the price could go down. But now, if the market is sitting in the middle of a range, which is the middle of nowhere, I'm not going to now start creating levels on the market to try and support why I want to take a buy, because it doesn't make no sense. Because then I'm going against my whole bias, which was already in place before I took the trade and the trade won. So what I'm going to do now is just wait patiently to see how the market comes back down to the structural level lows. See if we get a reaction and I can play the range for another buy or I'll just wait patiently for the price to break out of this range to confirm a continuation on the 4H time frame. Look for that retest of the structure and then the continuation to the downside. Because what happens now if I decide to take this trade in the middle as a buy is I'm going against the whole bias. And the bias is if we're in a range, we should bounce from the top to the bottom. Now it could bounce and it could go up. But do you know what? I know that if I avoid taking this trade now in the future is going to play in my favor because I'm not going to take as many losses as this situation will eventually give me. So what I prefer to do is to now just wait patiently for more evidence, more confirmation, support my bias with the structure on the 4H time frame, the behavior on the outer hourly, and then look for those patterns that I'm looking to trade on the lower time frames. Because honestly, if the market is in a range, then technically we don't know where it's going. So your highest probable chances of winning any trades you take within a range is always going to be from the top. But there is something you need to consider. If the range looks something like this and you can see that price is bouncing clearly from the top to the bottom, top to the bottom, then these are the ranges that are probably the best ranges that to be trading. Whereas if you're taking a trade and in a range that looks something like this and you start to see that price is bouncing to the top, bottom, then coming up, bouncing down, coming up again, bouncing down. These are the ranges you want to avoid because these are the ones that are going to give you problems. And always remember, there's three phases in any market structure. There's going to be you're up, you're down, and you're sideways. And if you're looking for clean, crisp trades to take in an uptrend, then that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for clean, crisp trades to take in a downtrend, then that's what you should be looking for. And the same for ranges. If you're planning to trade the ranges, make sure they're clean and crisp also. Because if they're not, you're going to find yourself having problems. And as you can see, when we go down to the hourly time frame here, we have a nice clean range bouncing from the top to the bottom. And these are the ranges that you want to take advantage of. So see how it goes moving forward when taking your trades. But this is just a breakdown on EURUSD. And if you want to see more of this, make sure you guys pop a like, subscribe to the channel and uh, continue supporting these videos. And I definitely know what I need to be doing next. But I hope that was clear for you guys to understand. And as I said, the more you keep it simple, the better your results are going to come. The more you complicate it and you start to draw 10 and 20 and 50 lines on your charts, using all these different kinds of indicators, which are lagging, not saying they don't work, but they're lagging, 
You're just going to find yourself trying to find too much supporting evidence. And then guess what's going to happen? It's going to just distort your way of thinking. It's going to affect your trading. And it's just going to be a whole heap of shambles. So keep it simple. We have structure to the market up. Clearly now this is indicating sell by structure. We have a range in the market where price is showing signs of rejection. We know that price will usually reject at a key level more often than not. Once we get the evidence of price coming into those levels, we need to find support and evidence of why this level will hold and we'll get a rejection. And then we go down to our lower time frames to look for those patterns, wick rejections, understand the phase, which is a push phase, now expecting the exhaustion phase, find those wick rejections, and then just take the trade as part of the numbers game. So I hope that was fruitful. And until next time, take care.